coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. Yep, my friend was bragging. His new 3D printer can print a gun. I said, well, I've had a Canon printer for years. <laughs> dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast that every single week we choose a popular saying and we take an admittedly shallow, hopefully comedic, once in a while interesting, if we're lucky, educational dive into its meaning, its usage, its origins, but mostly we're going to use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation on. My name is Jurassic Mark. And I am Skinny. I love how shallow we are. We are the shallowest. So, Wait, can you be more shallow than shallow? Is there is there something lesser than shallow? I don't know. We'll Empty? See what, uh, what is like Brad, it's a Bradley pool. Cooper and... Lady Gaga have to say about being shallow. In the shallows? Yeah, I think they live there. Shallows. Can it be plural? Can there be more than one shallow together? Uh, two, what are two shallow people? Shallows. Do, they live in... Was that where they live? <laughs> I don't know. These shallowed halls? These shallowed halls. Well, today is going to be different. Awesome. What's different about today? Today is going to be different. Well, before we... Ex- well, yeah, let's, let's say... Today is going to be different because we're not tackling one... Idiom. Oh, we were probably doing two then. We're not doing two. What? Three? I would I would I think it's more I don't have an exact number, but let's call it a six shooter of idioms. Oh, a, a half a dozen. <laughs> Machine gun of idioms. A, a baker a, a baker's gun dozen. A baker's dozen if the baker has gone postal. <laughs> it's a postal dozen. It's a guns and ammo themed <laughs> episode. It's a postal dozen. A postal dozen. <laughs> oh no. This, so what is that? Twelve? No, thirteen. No, that's a baker's dozen. What's a postal dozen? Six. That was six. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a quick counter. Well, today, um, yeah, because we, we've had uh, some fun time. Uh, we've had some fun time. Some fun time. Some fun time. Some and, fun time. And working on uh, our, our licenses. Yeah, somebody uh, brought up an opportunity for us to uh, take a firearm safety course, and we, of course, said. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. So anything that gives us because uh, we're safety is our. I was going to say that gives us ammo for our podcast, but <laughs> that's funny. I, I was thinking more on the safety side because yeah, if there's two guys that play it safe, that's us. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it, you know uh, the next course we're gonna we're thinking about maybe a St. John ambulance do a, some sort of yep first aid. What kind of idiom CPR. would you use in a CPR class? Staying alive? Uh, no, that's not an idiom. Um, having heart last breath hmm. um, breathing down my neck <laughs> <laughs> breathing down my neck hole oh no <laughs> that's terrible now yeah, no, do you it's... do CPR on someone who's had like that emphysema surgery is that is that different oh interesting like, yeah, I think you can use a straw it doesn't have to be so mouth on mouth do you just breathe directly down their neck, I, I their don't neck know. hole I don't know I'm curious. Uh, now. You must, because or if you did their mouth, that you'd have to like plug up the neck hole because then it would just come out. Yeah, good point. Or I, they would start whistling know. like a flute. <laughs> if you start start going like this with your fingers on the neck hole, oh, that's uh, for, for the those who are just listening to audio. You missed. A, <laughs> you, you need to you need to see that you're playing someone just like a like a clarinet. <laughs> oh dear, blowing in their mouth hole and. Covering, it's like an I'm, I'm sure they I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure they cover emphysema neck holes in CPR class. It has to be a thing. I mean, they covered some things that I felt unnecessary in our firearm safety course. Yeah, well, that I actually appreciate because we've actually done a few safety courses together. We did a uh, parachute safety course together. That's right. That was about four hours long. Uh, this one was twelve hours of of, of excitement, and it's funny. When that you talk to people about like I'm, I want to do a firearm safety course, there are some strong feelings around firearms. Yeah, I, I immediately was met with why. <laughs> I'm like I, I think safety is important. Safety is a good thing because it's funny because when we went around uh, like it, within the class, everybody, everybody had a story of using a firearm, like whether it's like. Uncle Joe's ranch and we were out in the back 40 and out came the the 22 to shoot cans off of the fence or they've been hunting or right there's there's everybody had a story but no one had like in that particular group we were still like pre-licensed yeah this was a group yeah and so people and so people wanting to like oh I've used a firearm but I've not done so like 
I've not had my license to do yeah. so. Yeah. And so everyone's like, I think, you know, just want to do the right thing and, uh, yeah. and nobody, be, be safe about not it. Not one person in that circle, and nobody was told ahead of time what questions would be asked. Not one person in that circle was like, oh, I want to protect my house. And, and there was not a, a violent or... I think that for, I think trap shooting sounded fantastic. That sounds really fun. It sounds really yeah. fun. I've already been investigating one of those electric, like, shut your trap shooter. Oh, you've been looking into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to buy one? Where are you going to go do it? I don't know. Somewhere in Maple Ridge. <laughs> Maple Ridge seems like... Not to be too specific. Some place in Maple Ridge sounds like the perfect the place rooftop to of... shoot trap. Yeah, interesting. Well, if you... I, the reason I say that is because, uh, exactly, I've uh, been out like geocaching and came across like this big open fieldy area that was just like... For you that. know when, when you're going uh, like when you've seen like Lord of the Rings and then they're in that that mountain that Death Mountain and it's like literally you're walking like there's just skulls everywhere right it's like that but you shotgun found that? shells oh really it was like you're walking on it, it was like carpeted with shotgun shells and so people come out there clearly to target practice and it's obviously a safe spot too enough people or one person went crazy. <laughs> And just unloaded cases of ammo shells there. It's like it's like carpet. It's so thick out in the middle of nowhere. And so yeah, I thought it would be fun, you know, like the pull. And then yeah. And then the instructor was talking about like, um, like where he there's the one where it comes at him. Right. One one comes at you. One goes away from you. Right. Yeah. 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 And so it's like um, pull, and then one comes at you. Ba-blam, you got to quickly deal with that one. And then re- reacquire the, the the long distance one. Yeah, like, that sounds really fun. Yeah, it's like Duck Hunter. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Duck Hunter would have been boring if it was clay pigeons, but it was. Anyway, uh, yeah, there it was very much more informative, like not just the safety part, like the history of gun manufacturing even it was like it, it covered a lot yeah in terms of like the safety he took you through the whole gambit and it's on like the official like government rcmp test we're, we're talking down to uh, probably you know we, we can cover it in some of the idioms but like literally like sparks into gunpowder to ignite yeah black powder muskets and <laughs> yeah we actually did a black powder exercise yeah like, you're you're all the way back to muskets yeah yeah which is pretty it's crazy. funny that they're required to teach that when the only purpose of firing a musket these days is for Fort, like Fort Langley demonstration, yeah, yeah, it's going to be some <laughs> a musket? role playing fur trading expedition. So, but yeah, it was super informative, and then the that, safety part of it that obviously question, was that question. People and people people are wondering. I'm sure as they listen, why would you take that? Why would you do that? Right. So immediately, it's like well. If shot a firearm before you're like I want to do it in a safe and legitimate fashion, um, but it, yeah, it, it makes the eyebrows go up on people. Yeah, I, I found that fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I had less eyebrows because um, your friends well, have alopecia, so I have. <laughs> that's not going to help. I I haven't told that many people, but those like. Uh, the 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 only guns that I have well not the only guns but the guns that I have memories of shooting um, were in the the Amer- our, our neighbor down south in the Americas America and um, kind of the same thing like out in the middle of nowhere shooting pop cans or whatever and so that's my dad's side of the family mm-hmm. so they're like oh yeah ding, 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 you had to take ding, a course ding, ding, ding. <laughs> it's more like that <laughs> you had to take a course why. Their wives were like, "Why did? What'd you say? I could have shown you." It's more like that, uh, but yeah, there's a few few people that are just like, and if you just answer like, "Oh, it's just opportunity, more knowledge, hands-on experience." Uh, we we did not fire any single firearm. No, there during was, the course no, it was all was, classroom work. There was hands-on with D. What do you call it? D. Uh, like the, deactivated. Fi- right. There's no firing pins. There's no. Li- there's no ammunition. That. Um, there's nothing live about any of it. Yeah, it's e- everything is had like whether it's firing pins or things done with um, the barrels or everything. There, yeah, there's not a live weapon. There's not a live piece of ammunition. And what was interesting in Canada when it comes to owning or transporting or storing a firearm, um, even the instructor said, even those, what do you have, four or five or six deactivated, like disassembled, There's you couldn't if you wanted to mm-hmm. 
shoot something with with these firearms even then he had to follow strictly abide by canadian laws with regards to storage and transportation of right. these deactivated firearms and uh, it's interesting yes yeah. yeah, canada takes it very seriously we, we haven't even told the good uh illegitimate children even what idioms we're talking about today well this this is this is what's interesting i we came up with this idea to do one episode that covers a, a any idiom that that uh crosses into this sort of territory or theme so like two two birds with one firearm i didn't even come across that one oh that wait that's a stone he messed with me for a second i'm like i don't have that one but then i discovered this sitting shotgun bite the bullet son of a gun flash in the pan and shoot the breeze are idioms we've already done well there you go we've already covered five in within the first 90 episodes five of them were gun related or shooting related well, so, so today we should probably hit uh, trigger finger, trigger finger, uh, triggered. <laughs> I've got, I've got itchy trigger finger. I've got you can triggered. Get some for your for that. I don't, I don't have that. These are the, the these are the ones we're going to cover today that I've got notes for, and you're you're you add in whatever you okay. whatever you don't have, but uh, um, adding in shotgun wedding, sweating bullets. Going off half cock. Shotgun wedding. Yep. That's on the list. Lock, stock, and barrel. Which is interesting because it shouldn't be lock, stock, and barrel. It should be stock, action, barrel. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hair triggered, uh, triggered, itchy trigger finger, full bore, um, full shoot bore. from the hip, getting fired. And that's not the end of the list, but that's the ones I have notes on for today. Did you say bite the bullet? No, we've done that before. Did we? Okay. Yeah. So we'll when we get into this, I'll do a like ten seconds or less recap on the ones we've done before, because uh, they do play into some of the other ones. But um, so, so stuff that was firearms related, we thought well, you know we could at least cover you know forty fifty minutes of stuff. So we'll just yeah. we'll we will just halfway through uh, the episode today, we will just jump in with some riddle links and then restart a new episode for next week. Okay. Part, well, part one, part two. That sounds good. So that it doesn't drag on. For Unless forever. this ends in ten minutes, and <laughs> we got through that really quick. It's what it is. Uh, so I don't know where to play the origins song. We do that now. Um. No. Okay. I won't then. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's. I'm still thinking preamble related. Okay. I'm, that's we have like a, an I'm hour still, I, yeah, to talk. I'm, we should do origins like at least once. Okay, well, th- I won't. I'll I'll say this before we get into new contact be- content because the ones we have done, flash in the pan, for example, came. So just to recap really quickly, came from the gold rush, and what we learned uh, in the musket training is that there's a pan where you put your black powder, and that's where the flash goes off, which then. Uh, ignites the whatever the, I don't remember the steps now. I, did I fail that part of the test? <laughs> but anyway, a flash goes off, but doesn't fire the bullet, doesn't fire the gun. That's a flash in the pan. So that was flash in the pan. We did that. That was episode eighty-seven. Right. That like, but the flash in the pan was like to to light off the gunpowder that was behind the bullet. Yeah. Like so. It, it's, so a flintlock it's- musket. Uh, would have these pans to hold charges of gunpowder and attempt to fire the musket in which the gunpowder flared up, but the bullet wasn't fired is a flash in the pan. There you go. Um, Riding shotgun, which was episode 32. That's a long time ago. And as you probably already know, that came from shotgun holders on protecting stagecoaches. Sure. Uh, Bite the bullet, episode nine. Really? Yeah. Episode nine. We're in episode Uh, like 240. 249. 249. Yeah. Wow. So 240 episodes episodes ago, we did Bite the Bullet, which goes back to the 1700, comes from military origin. There was a bunch of examples, but the one that stuck was the soft lead of a bullet being something you could chew on when you're like getting surgery on the field or removing a, another bullet that you've been hit with. Uh, shoot the Breeze, we, we covered. Um, it came from the Campesinos shooting their guns randomly into the air, like you see on every Western. Son of a Gun, we covered, which was. Uh, uh, any child born on board with with uncertain paternity would be listed on the ship's log as a son of a gun, and so now we're into new territory. I think the reason, like that, uh, the whole guns being taboo thing is really uh, kicked in was all these things related to uh, like incidences in schools. Um, I can tell you from my childhood, and so like I'm a kid from the from the seventies. There was a a 
like a neighborhood hooligan and and his buddy which was three three or four doors down from from my best friend and uh, so it was like in and down the street one of our mutual friends was riding his bike down the street and the the hooligans had gotten into his his dad's uh, gun safe or whether it was locked or I'm not sure what the situation was but they got his gun loaded in a bullet they thought they would it would be funny as as the friend went by on the bike to shoot his tire they thought that would be hilarious wow and put one into his chest killed him what yeah this was like my childhood like right like uh, no 100 feet from my my best friend's house yeah 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 the the neighborhood hooligans put down I won't say their names, but it, their names from like childhood are etched into my brain because it was so. Yeah, and they uh, yeah put a bullet into him. Uh, did did they, he survive? No, killed him. No way. Yeah, full out like gun. in Canada. Yeah, this was like in my childhood. Yeah, and they had a rifle out there for who knows what reason. Yeah, the 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 claim was that they were going to shoot the kid's tire while he was biking. That's not better. I mean, it is better. He survives, but. They're yeah, still so shooting at miss, a kid on a bike. the tire because they're kids and don't know what they're doing. And yeah, and, and that was one of the things covered in the safety course is that forget what you see on the movies. It is wildly difficult to aim. <laughs> right, like, right. Like, you know, he There's, he was giving an example of something on uh, some range he was at or he runs and he did the two handed pistols and he emptied both of them. I think he said 10 shots each and three hit the target. Crazy. So it's difficult. Don't don't mess around. Yeah, so like, you are not a marksman. And so th- I think that's kind of like why anything to do with the word gun is just like so taboo. Yeah. Like, so they did not have firearm safety courses, is what I'm saying. Was the sun out <laughs> no. that day? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Whatever you're about to say is going to be terrible, so just don't say it. <laughs> I was just going to say sun's out, gun's out. <laughs> I guess. I did hear this. Guns are like gum. Pull it out in class and everyone acts like they've been your best friend since kindergarten. <laughs> And so I, I I know there is no funny gun humor, but I tr- you have to at least wow try yeah yeah it, it's it, it's it's like such a like a visceral people like reaction why 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 would what you do you need that? that for why would you do, why would you have that yeah yeah I don't, I don't even own a gun or anything it's just like why would you why would you even want to have a safety course I don't know no yeah it was. It I have was, my fishing it license. It was offered to me, and I said yes. <laughs> I have my boat. I've done boat safety course. Parachuting. <laughs> yeah, we, that parachute course. If, if somebody was called me out. today and said, hey, there's a, um, a group group raid if you want to go get your pilot's license, I'd say yes to that, too. Like I, I, Absolutely. Like It could be pilot, archery, slingshot, remote control. Like If it's something's an opportunity to learn something new and try something that new. That boat safety course was like, it was like, question 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 on on yeah on, yeah had to go through all of this blah 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 stuff process answer was this pre the rubber dinghy across the fraser <laughs> that's probably why we should have had a boat <laughs> safety course no it's because my uh like uh, again we have family members who have boats um both my dad and my wife's dad had boats and so it was like those moments pop up it's like you want to ride the boat drive the boat it's like yeah and it's like you don't you know, in principle, what to do, and you drive it around safely. Nothing happens like ninety nine point nine percent of the time. But then yeah. there's that one time where things go haywire, and, and you should have had that should have had your information. Yeah. yeah, and so the safety course is all about it's all about that stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's good. Yep, my friend was bragging. His new three D printer can print a gun. I said, "Well, I've had a Canon printer for years." <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> that's pretty great so, we've also done loose cannon before well, there you go. i didn't have that on here yeah so we should probably uh at least find out where some of uh some, some of these things come from yeah we listed off the ones we're going to cover so let's start talking about where they come from I said some words where'd they go where'd they go no one can know i turned around and looked behind those words came Another 
Let's go. All right. Well, where to begin? Where to begin? Let's go with how about shotgun wedding? Okay. So some of these will have lots of information. Some of them will not so much. Here's one that's just uh, barely a sentence long. So a shotgun wedding uh, is a marriage that is undertaken in haste and typically because the bride is pregnant. Babies. Babies. So the idea is it's a shotgun wedding because the father of the bride is holding the groom <laughs> at the end of his gun mm -hmm. saying you shall now be married mm -hmm. so uh that's more in storytelling than any sort of factual historical event but shotgun wedding is a good place to start for firearm related idiom mm -hmm. and so yeah i've been to a couple shotgun weddings <laughs> have you yeah uh actually our instructor was sharing that when his baby sister got married it was not for for this reason she it wasn't actually a shotgun wedding but he bought them a shotgun and had the stock engraved with their wedding date. I thought that was pretty funny. That's romance. <laughs> That's romance. The family. Well, the, it's from the brother. Yeah. It's awesome. How about He's sweating cool. bullets? Oh, wait, I also forgot. Oh man, I've already blown this. I was, I was so prepared today. Um, I'll go backwards. This isn't a shotgun wedding. Rob Lowe, Parks and Rec, mm. shotgun wedding. Um, the, they're, they're so out of order here. This, this is going to be. Well, it's actually, crazy trying to cover like six or seven idioms. The, well, this is the it got one. legal. This guy was sweating bullets. Sweating bullets. Have you ever used that? Sweating bullets. Of course. So this one came across. I'm like, does it does it even have a historical background? Is there anything to it? So sweating bullets. This actually goes back to in usage as an idiom to back to at least 1929. Uh, there's posters from that era that uh, might be related to an older phrase, which you'll know exactly where this one comes from, to sweat blood, which has the same meaning, but apparently, not apparently, that one is rooted in the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, description of, of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and the quote is, uh, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as, as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. So apparently that somehow segued into sweating bullets. So the biblical roots are totally possible for that one, but it also might be possible for this. The bullets in question are simply the size of the drops of sweat. Oh, okay. Um, that makes some sense. In modern language. Hmm. So there, there is quite a bit of common thought that He's Jesus sweating nano sim cards that Jesus really did sweat blood because that is a thing modern under times. Yeah. <laughs> perfect mm -hmm. <laughs> so because of their size and shape a, a drop of blood has a, a pointier end in a teardrop shape mm -hmm. right but it's a little thicker denser anyway yeah just come so biblical reference or just the literal shape and size of sweat because you know there are different kinds of sweats there's like the meat sweats. There's the meat when, sweats. When you've had too much. But there's like the glow. There's the glow where you're just kind of shiny. Then oh, there's like the drops. And have you ever seen someone break out into a set like in a moment's notice? Yeah. It, like, so this is, and not meaning to be crass, but like when there's like a backed up little bowel movement situation. All right. And you're like, I've got to go to the bathroom right now. And you can't. Okay. Yeah. You break out in the, I don't know, what, the bum sweats. I don't know what they are or like that that I've got to go to the can sweats. <laughs> Your body just goes like, bad things are happening. I'm going to start sweating. You're like a salamander, <laughs> you know, trying to preserve itself in some, some sort of hostile situation. Yeah. I've always equated sweating bullets with fear though. Like you're, yeah, you're so, you're afraid of, not afraid of bullets, but you're like, I was sweating bullets because I thought I was you're in writing, trouble for. You're writing an important exam. Yeah, and I, I didn't study. I was sweating bullets. Okay, what do we have next? Go around half cocked. That's from the classic movie Blood Simple in 1984. Didn't <laughs> quite. I don't think I've seen that one. No, I don't know if anybody has. So going off half cocked, I, I I don't know that I've ever I've said it, but I don't know if I've ever associated it. That was one of the safety it. mechanisms. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever associated it with guns, but it's a safety mechanism in some. In, in, in the action of some guns. Yeah, so this goes back to, again, the days of flintlock and caplock firearms, both of which were in the safety course of what that meant, where the half cock position of the hammer was actually a rudimentary safety position. Right, you, which, can't, you can't shoot it in Which half sounds cock. wrong. Like, uncocked, whatever that term is. <laughs> Decocked. That should be a safety position. Yeah, that's probably safer. Yeah, so half cocked is apparently a safety position, 
which is halfway to full cocked. Full, <laughs> yeah. Just cocked. So it's the proper positioning for the priming uh, the pan uh, back in those guns or inserting a percussion cap. And so it was if it if it if it did happen, mm-hmm. it was a mistake. So it went off half cocked. It shouldn't have happened. It was in safety mode. And that's one of the things we learned. Yeah. Always assume. No, it, always use your safety. Never rely on it. Yeah, it was like it was one of those parts of the course where it's like, oh, the safety's on. He's like, have the safety on. Don't trust the safety. Yeah. So going off half cocked, and that he has some great stories to go with why you should never do that. Yeah, because he, he was also in the military. Yeah, he's a military um, person. So yeah, he's like, yeah. And here's the story why you should never do that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was fascinating that whole thing. Um, what was it? Okay, the acronym ACTS was. Uh, what was ACTS? AC. So uh, assume that every gun is loaded. Yeah. Yeah. Control the muzzle. Direction. Uh, yeah. Control muzzle direction so that you're not uh, wandering around like an idiot. T. Um, let's see. Control. Wow. We've already lost it. I was trying to I know be ahead of I know S is C. I know C. S, S. C improve. Like, yeah. so what, what, what was T? I, I, if I start looking this up in five seconds and it comes to mind. Oh, man. T. He's going to be saying, oh, trigger, trigger finger. Oh. Yeah. Just before, ah. just before you got there. Trigger finger. Yeah. So don't leave your finger on the, uh, that's the one letter that acronym now, uh, actually applies to T means trigger. The other one are C and yeah, yeah, assume yeah, stupid. Lame. All right. Well, let's wrap up half cocked <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll get into games. So half cocked was in. Uh, it's been in use se- since the late 1700s. The earliest known citation of the phrase "going off at high cocked," uh, going off, off at half cocked, comes from London and its environs. Described in 1761, this is the quote: "Some arms taken at Bath in the year 1715 distinguished from all others in the Tower by having what is called dog locks. That is a kind of lock with a catch to prevent their going off at half cocked." That's not an idiom. That's actual uh, definition. <laughs> This is terrible. That, that, my, my notes are terrible. Uh, we now use it in North America to go off half cock mean to speak or act impulsively without proper preparation, just sudden, which does allude to a sudden discharge of a firearm. Like, but this should be fine. And then it's not. And then it's not. <laughs> they went off half cock. It's like, oh, it seems safe. And like, then I went it off, wasn't. I went off half cocked, clearing out the memory of our camera. <laughs> so this happened right now. So. That's why half the video has... Half the video? Yeah. That's or why, That's why uh, five minutes of the video. We'll see how long it takes. Doesn't matter. We're going to do a part two right after this that's with right. full video. Tune in for next week for the remaining half of, of Full Cocked. I'd be curious to know, if you're listening right now, do you watch or do you listen? Let us know. They listen. <laughs> Don't need to let us know? No, that's fine. <laughs> you can just write to us because you're bored. That's fine, too. All right. Well, anyway, by 1888, the rest of the English world was using half cocked or go off half cocked to mean just to act impulsively without any preparation. Well, which is a perfect like meaning for half cocked. It is. Yeah. It's like, I thought it was safe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then it wasn't. It, it, it does. It actually really means something it's to us It's one of the now. best ones. Yeah. Yeah. After taking the safety course, it actually really, it's like, wow, that, that's I, I thought more I was, impactful. I thought I was in good company. <laughs> I thought, I thought everything was fine. Everything was fine. It was half cocked. I thought it was safe. Click. Turns out. <laughs> Turns out it wasn't. Well, well man. What, 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 yeah, go ahead. We, 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 we got so much stuff to still add in. Save it for part two. All right. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah. yeah well, it's all good. Let's, should we still wrap up with a game? Let's do some riddlings to, to close it out. Riddling is a game we like to play. It takes a two-part trivia-based question. Requires a two-part overlapping answer. Overlapping by word, syllable, or syllables. Uh, so, for example, last week we left you with... Uh, our idiom was familiarity breeds contempt. And we left you with this riddling. Singers of I Saw the Sign is also where you can find the story of the fox and the lion. Now, of course, you would need to hear that episode or be knowledgeable in Aesop's oh, no, fables. Know. Okay, go ahead. That's Ace of Aesop's fables. Ace of Aesop's fables. The correct answer is not Ace of Base. No. It's not Aesop's fables. Ridiculous. It's Ace of Aesop's fables. That's and that's Riddling. how you play Riddling. Perfect. I've got a couple prepared. I've got a couple prepared. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> spastic index digit. <laughs> I love <laughs> Sorry. it. Love it already. The word spastic. Spastic index digit is the Colonel Sanders slogan. 
Interesting. Spastic index digit is the Colonel Sanders slogan. Wait. Villegitimate children. Do you got any of is these? Is it? Is it? I, I'm, I'm pulling from Itchy? Are we going itchy? Well, you can. Itchy trigger finger licking good. <laughs> there you go. Itchy trigger finger licking good. Is that, is that what you had? Perfect. Uh, that's good. Uh, okay, here's one for you. Um, you are very quick to activate that gun, and we found this evidence on the weapon. What? You are very quick to activate that gun, and we found this evidence. Let me rephrase it. You are spastic ac- activating that gun, and we found this evidence on that weapon. Oh, man. Um... Trigger, trigger fingerprint? Itchy, yeah. It's the same one as oh, yours. Oh, is it? That's why I added spastic. Oh, okay. Itchy trigger fingerprint. Hopefully the itchy legitimate children were faster, faster yeah. than I was. Okay, well, it's okay. I've got another one. I've got another one here. No problem. Ignition on a tray helps this organ produce insulin. Ignition on a tray oh. helps this organ produce insulin. Well done with the wording there. Ignition on a tray. That's great. I'm going to go with uh, flash pancreas. Flash in the pancreas. Flash in the pancreas. Flash in the pancreas. I like it. Very nice. Well, I got one more, but let's leave it hanging. Villegitimate children, hopefully you can uh, beat us beat us to some of these. We would love to hear from you if you have uh, an answer for this next one. Reach out on Instagram at the dot village dot idiom or email us the village idiom podcast at gmail.com or whether it's the Facebooks, the YouTubes, or the X at three minutes gun. All right, here we go. This long barreled firearm is Paris's pride and joy. This long barreled <laughs> firearm is Paris's pride and joy. That's hilarious. And that's three minutes gone. You got it? <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just a little sneaky. Sneaky. Yeah, it's good. Well, uh, stay tuned uh, in one week from now. Or if you're listening, if you didn't know, and you listen to not this upcoming <laughs> weeks, if you listen to that next week, just what keep you play saying? them back to back because then that'll make sense. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I'm Skinny. I'm Jurassic Mark. And these are the Village Idioms. That's three minutes gone.